and sisters, when we speak of healing the hearts, it means something has shattered, something has broken, something is damaged, something is perhaps diseased. There is a problem, basically. That's when we speak about healing hearts. I tell you one thing, this particular event, something I know about it is just like other events, there comes a time when it is taken from a point to a very, very high point where the organization, the facilities, the registration, the advertising, the setting, and everything changes. I recall when I first started out, it wasn't as professional as it is now in the field of da'wah, generally. You used to gather people in the masjid and speak, and mashallah, the imam used to usually make us feel like we are kuffar, and then we walk out. And we used to feel like, you know what, Aish, it's hard to be a Muslim. I don't think I'm ever going to get there. And uh, I was little. We grew up a little bit. And uh, some things happened that changed everything. And one of them was Brother Ahmad Javier. I think in the Philippines as well, the da'wah moved from one point to a level of professionalism together with the videography and photography on another level altogether that actually beamed the teachings across the globe. It's a sadaqa jariya. May Allah grant him jannah. May Allah Almighty reward him for everyone who is taking the da'wah seriously, especially when it comes to technological benefit. And we ask Allah to grant each one of us a lesson because when I stand in, uh, in front of everyone, I think to myself, I'm going to go very soon. When I go, how will they remember me? I pray that Allah grants us a good ending so that at least people can remember goodness. And if they don't remember you, it's not, it's not a bad thing. If people forget you within a short span of time, it's not a bad thing. For as long as your reward keeps clocking, even for a hundred and a thousand years, if no one knows your name, no problem. They won't know it. How many of you know your grandfather's grandfather? Almost nobody. Right? You know him? MashaAllah, that's amazing. That's because, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, Allah has blessed you. But many of us are not as fortunate as he. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. Now, when death happens, the heart is shattered. When divorce happens, many people go through a process that requires healing of the heart. It's not an easy thing. I know nowadays people go through divorce and have a party. Have you heard of divorce parties? They are so happy that, ah, I'm divorced, yay! I couldn't wait to get out of it. You know what? Why did you get in it in the first place? And that's why my brothers and sisters don't go for massive weddings. You rather the barakah because you don't know how long it's going to last. I read an article they said in Kuwait, Allahu A'lam, it was on social media, true or false, Allah knows best. They say there was a case recently, the marriage lasted three minutes, literally three minutes. They were in front of the Qadi and uh, he just solemnized everything. And as they were uh, proceeding, three minutes, literally three minutes. They had an argument and this guy says, you know what? Uh, in fact, the woman herself says, I don't want this marriage anymore. And the man was the Qadi, the judge or the officiator was sitting right there. He had to cancel things, nullify things and it was over. The point I'm raising is the heart is very delicate. Do not allow anyone ownership of it besides Allah. The heart, watch it, be careful. Don't become inclined towards things very easily whether it is material or anything you found on earth, even a human. Be careful how much you incline. Because people say, I'm, I'm going to say this, right? It sounds strange, right? People say, I can't control it. I just love this guy so much. I have to marry him. And I one example, right? Or, or, this, or this woman or whoever it might be, I'm in love. I have no control. Look, I have no control. I tell you what, Allah says, initially we gave you control. You allowed it, that, that initial control you had, you allowed it to go from there. Then you lost the control and you're blaming Allah. Allah told you initially you did. 
You saw something, you were supposed to lower your gaze. You saw something, you were supposed to remind yourself properly about the reality. The reality is, you know what? Mashallah. Sometimes you see a beautiful, what can I say? Motor vehicle, right? You see a beautiful motor vehicle. You can't afford it. Just say, Mashallah, Subhanallah, and walk away. That's it. There's nothing you can do. You know, nothing much. If you're lucky, you know, Brother Ammar might give you a ride in it. You know, Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. That's if he has one, and I don't think he does. But Mashallah, one day, you know, I normally say things because one day, Inshallah, we might have it. When you fly in my private jet, Inshallah, that's the day I will fly in it as well. Uh, May Allah grant us ease. So when you allow the heart to incline in this particular way, you are at fault because you did not control it. And now it's out of your control. You're at fault. You have to take part of the blame. You can't say no. It's happened to all of us, myself included. We tend to attach ourselves to sometimes to people, sometimes to things. And then the heart is hurt when we are distanced from that thing or that person. The heart is hurt. We are human. It happens to us. That's why we are talking about it. That's why we are talking about it. We have to heal this heart. And really, my brothers and sisters, it's not easy. Allah Almighty has revealed the Quran. The Quran in it is cure for the hearts. Ya nasu qad jaatkum rabbikum. O people, a reminder or a warning has come to you from your Lord. Look at how Allah starts it. O people, a reminder or a warning has come to you from your Lord. And immediately after that, Allah says, وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ And cure for that which is within your chest. Why cure after the reminder? Because that reminder itself will help you. You won't need to become shattered in the first place in order to be healed. The healing is one thing. But before you needed the healing, you have to have been diseased or shattered. If I'm in need, this reminder will actually take me from strength to strength, not from weakness to strength. That's if I already took heed. But again, we are human. We have moments of strength and we have moments of weakness after the strength as well. Many of us. Sometimes we feel very strong. What's the strength? I did my Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. And I did my Sunnah and Nafil. And I did this. And guess what? A week later, two weeks later, I'm so lazy. I missed my Fajr. I was lazy for my Dhuhr. But you were so strong. Be careful. This is the reminder. It's come to you. You want to heal? Push yourself. Push yourself. If you don't push yourself, no one is going to push you. Fight the laziness. Tell yourself the reality is I cannot have this because it's not mine and it will not be mine. Subhanallah. I can work towards something Allah has made permissible for me and I will try it. But my main focus is paradise. If you want true cure of the heart, focus on paradise. Now focus on something that you find on earth. It's going to leave you or you will leave it. Even if you, you are, for example... If you have what you wanted, if you have certain things you wanted, one day they're going to be taken away from you. They have to be taken away from you or you will be taken away from those things because I have to go back to Allah. In all honesty, I cannot wait for the day I'm going to go back to my maker. Do you know why? If he made things that I'm crazy about, I wonder how he is, subhanallah. Do you get the point? Allah's made things that I'm crazy about. I look and I'm so, so amazed by the scene of an ocean and the greenery and the mountains and the water and sometimes the weather, mashallah, and so many other things that we consider nature, but in actual fact made by Allah. If Allah has made those things and then He's made people, every single person He's ever made is totally and absolutely unique. That is Allah. He, every person has his or her own identity and mind and thoughts and whatever else. Imagine the Creator. Allah says, 
هذا خلق الله فأروني ماذا خلق الذين من دونه This is the creation of Allah So show me what those besides Allah have created Nothing, zero They didn't make a thing The creation of Allah is amazing It's so impressive I'm standing here Every face is different If it was the same I wouldn't know who you were Everyone is wearing different colors You might have a slightly similar color But everything you're wearing is unique Your size is different Right? Allah knows you He loves you He made you for a reason And you are a test for me And I'm a test for you Do I honor you and respect you Or do I abuse this? And same applies the other way around when I take heed and I get closer to Allah, the heart is protected before it needs healing. Protected. So Allah teaches you from the beginning, protect your heart. What do you do? Read what I sent to you, understand it, put it into practice, your heart will be safe. Why? Because my heart belongs to Allah. People can let you down. They will let you down. In fact, they shall let you down. It's up to you to decide whether the letting down was worth mending and continuing or not even mending, walking away. Sometimes people are married for 25 years. Something massive goes wrong. They go away. They walk away, literally. Whereas some people will say, no, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to make, I'm going to mend it. And that's what I would recommend. It depends what it is. Obviously, I'm just making a general thing. But you work on it. Don't just break a relation. You know why? We are taught that everyone falters. If you are going to destroy a relationship because of a mistake, we would all have to destroy nearly all of our relationships because we all make mistakes. Like I said, it depends what it is. Don't come back to me after you've done something absurd and say, did you hear? Did you hear? We better mend relation. Did you hear? Because that's not true. Sometimes the healing of the heart is in the separation. Sometimes the healing of the heart is in going your own way and never talking to that person again in your life. It will heal your heart. To block them, no matter what. Sometimes when there is a haram relation, shaitan keeps coming to you and telling you, do you know what? If you leave this person now, you're going to break their heart. Well, should I break their heart or break my relation with Allah? Block, stop, break the heart and let them deal with it. It's okay. What happened? It was a haram relation. You are going to break your heart further if you keep it in. They should have known better. You cannot justify sin by saying, I'm going to break their heart if I quit it. Quit it now, block and stop and move on. You'll help yourself and help them. Okay, so... To surrender to the decree of Allah is also part and parcel of a means of healing. You surrender. Where did I get this from? The Quran. Allah says, you be happy with what Allah has decreed and Allah Almighty will really... In fact, it's part of your belief. وَالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ مِنْ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Good and bad fate is from Allah. So, I say that as part of my belief to enter the fold of Islam... I need to believe that whatever happens to me, good or bad, I'm going to surrender to it and I will be happy with it, literally. Something out of your control happened today. What are you going to do? Nothing. You can't do a thing. You have to surrender and you have to turn to Allah for healing. That's it. Allah will grant you. You say, Alhamdulillah, it could have been worse. Alhamdulillah, it could have been worse. You know, today, I had planned to do something and to say something, inshallah, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. It is to look into the Quran and speak about healing from the stories of the prophets. Because Allah Almighty speaks about why He gave us the stories of the prophets. Listen to this. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبَرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in all those stories, there are lessons for those with sound intellect. Number one. Then Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar. 
Every time we've sent a story to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is in order to strengthen your heart. In order to strengthen your heart, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not need strengthening, but it is more for us than for anyone else. If you look at Yusuf alayhi salam story, Allah says, Ahsan al Qasas, we are revealing to you the best of stories. Why does Allah say that? Because that story alone will heat you, heal your hearts. That story alone will heal your heart. You are suffering from people being jealous against you. Well, you need to know Allah will raise you above them. It's a matter of time. So be patient. How do I know that? The story of Yusuf alayhi salam, his own brothers were jealous. So sometimes a family member could become jealous of you and I. The question is, are you jealous of someone? Because many people say they jealous, they jealous. Hang on. Do you suffer from jealousy as well? Do you easily become jealous? If we deal with that, we can solve a bigger problem. Because each one of us needs to solve our problems. Do not be jealous of another. Not at all. If Allah gave them and you believe that Allah is the giver and Allah is the owner of sustenance and Allah decided and chose to give them, then you having a problem with that, you have a problem with Allah. If Allah gave you a million and I say, why? I've got a problem with Allah because Allah is the one who decided who to give what. Am I right? Allah is the one who decided who to give what. And you are saying he, this guy shouldn't have had it, shouldn't have it and so on. So jealousy, that's one thing. It's dealt with in the Quran, in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, the struggles of life. Yusuf alayhi salam, a young boy, very handsome, very intelligent. And he was thrown into a pit by his own family members. What happened? Allah says, we are going to raise you above them. Be patient. Be patient. Time is very important. Why? Because through time, you will heal. Your heart will heal. So be patient because that patience will at least take you through the period required for the heart to heal. Even if it's just a matter of time. You know, they say time heals wounds, right? How does it do that? It's Allah. You have a problem today it's a massive issue hold on calm down just push yourself through the days bear patience dhikr of allah remember allah a lot praise him look at the goodness you have which is very very important look at the favors of allah upon you try to count them although you won't count all of them but try to look at them and thank allah for them and then reach out to others who are struggling in a similar way or in any other way People who are struggling, when you go out to help them, it will help heal your own heart. I remember someone who lost their home and they were in a tent and we reached out to this, this family and we happened to help them with a makeshift home that was a little bit better than a tent. They were so happy and they said, you know what, can we come with you and help others who were in a situation that we were in? And I'm thinking to myself, but they don't have the ability, the financial capacity. They were not speaking about finances. They just wanted to come and volunteer to reach out to people and say a good word to them in order to put a smile on the faces of the heartbroken so that they themselves could heal. That's what it is. When you see an orphan, why does the hadith say when you stroke the the uh, head of the orphan you get a reward or when you look after an orphan or a widow you get a reward why because they were so broken at some point or they may still be so broken that if you are to care for that heart and to bring a smile of reassurance to their faces allah says we will reassure you with paradise the prophet muhammad peace be upon him says you will be with me like this in paradise it's amazing it's amazing why? How did I heal? I healed by helping others heal in my own small way. Now, if that's the case, don't you think the opposite is true? When you break someone, you shall be broken. Done. Did you hear that? When you break someone, when you, are, when you think you're petty, or you want to swear, abuse, hurt, cause depression in the cases of people you keep mocking, and that's why be careful of your jokes. Sometimes people are not strong enough to take a joke. 
You joke about them, about their appearance, about their intelligence, whether it's school, college, wherever it may be. Be careful. When you make people feel low and belittled, the day is coming. Kamatadinu to done. What you did to others shall be done unto you. It's, there's no way that you're going to get away. So we're talking of healing the heart. Don't break others' lives. You save your own heart. You'll save it. Be happy. Allah's blessed you with a lot, with intelligence, with wealth, with authority, with good looks, whatever else it may be. Just be humble. There are others who have far more than you, and they're humble. Humble. It's okay. Build yourself. You know why? Every time you build yourself, your heart is strengthened. When it's strengthened, when the crack comes and it has to come, when the hit comes and it has to come, it will be cushioned because you have a connection with Allah. Yusuf alayhi salam, did he ever give up? No. Did his father ever give up? No. His brothers would never have believed that a day will come when we are going to be driven back to this man to beg for food from the guy whom we thought was dead. It took them a long time to figure out who he was. And then another thing taught in the Quran that is amazing. Learn to forgive as much as you can. Let go. Let go. You know, I'm talking of myself. I've tried this and I've worked on it for years, for years. Just to let go. No matter what they've done, how they did it, when they did it, what the magnitude it was, the negativity against you, be it a comment, be it an action, be it something major or minor, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. It's gone. It's over. It's forgiven. Even before it's done. You might have heard me say this before. It's not easy. Why? You have to have a lot of confidence in your connection with Allah. That you know what? Allah is in charge. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Nothing. I'll smile. I remember one day I was treated unfairly. Very unfairly. I just looked and I smiled. I said, you know what? It's okay. Oh, they were surprised. This guy is not even irritated, not even irked. It irritates them more. Because you know what? They tried to do you down and you were not. No, I'm not going to go down. It's my Lord. He's in charge. Someone told me something and I said, you know what? If Allah wants, this will happen. If Allah does not want, it will not happen. MashaAllah. So we have to learn to make life easy for others and Allah will protect us. You make life difficult for someone, it's going to come. When you suffer heartbreak, you suffer something really, really big that you are struggling with. Ask Allah to help you. And then ask yourself, have I ever wronged someone? Important question. Have I ever wronged someone? Do you know why? Did you make someone cry? Do you think there were people in your life who might have cried to Allah about you and said, this person's harassing me so much, oh Allah? Is there? If there is or there was, you need to go and make peace with them. Then you'll get peace. That's why one of the ways of healing your heart when it's broken, you see, there are two things. Your heart is broken sometimes because someone broke it. Something happened. But sometimes you broke it yourself. Sometimes you are the one who, was so, who pretended like you were so strong, but you were so weak. You, know, you knew you were weak, but you kept on bashing, kept on attacking, kept on abusing, kept on belittling. So it came back to you. And what happened? You struggled. You struggled as a result of you making others struggle. The healing of it is to get closure. How do you get closure? You go to them and you say, look, I was young. I was naive. I was really not thinking what I was doing. I really caused you a lot of trouble. Today, I'm standing in front of you saying, please forgive me. Please pray for me. Forgive me. If you have the guts to do that, it will bring about closure. It will bring about a coolness of the heart that you never imagined you would get. Because there is an outstanding debt against that person. And then when someone comes to you, now this is the other way around, seeking forgiveness as far as possible, let it go. You don't, you don't have to announce it to them all the time, but between you and Allah, let it go. It's okay. I tell you why. I want to ask you a question. What is the true focus of a believer? 
I said it a bit earlier. Paradise, right? Paradise. That's the true focus. The true focus of a believer is paradise. We believe when you get to paradise, you will get that which no eyes have ever seen, no ears have ever heard. It hasn't even crossed your heart or your mind. You get everything, everything completely. As you think of it, it's yours. Jannah. If you get paradise, if you were told that here's your paradise, we are giving you entry in, but we have one condition. This is just by way of example. The condition is your worst enemy on earth is going to be your neighbor. Would you want to go? What's the true answer? There's only one answer. You have no option. You have to go. Because where are you going to choose to go? No, no, no. Just send me to Jahannam. I'd rather go there. Is that what you're going to say? You have to go to Jannah. You're going to say, Oh Allah, whoever is next to me or in front of me or wherever else it might be, I don't care. For as long as I'm there, I've got what I, was, what I worked for all my life. Once you are in it, do you know what? You realize if you have what you wanted completely, what loss are you at if someone else also has it? What did you lose? Nothing. So if you lost nothing, let it be. May Allah grant us Jannah. May Allah grant people who wronged us also Jannah. That's not an easy Amin. But inshallah, so what? If they get it and I get it, I mean, if I got it, I don't care who else gets it for as long as I got it. I, I really don't care who else gets it. So I say, oh Allah, those who don't like us, those who hate us, those who have harmed us, forgive them, grant them Jannah. Grant them Jannah. Do you know why? I need my, I, my heart is too precious for me to hold in it negative things. I, it'll be broken, man. It'll be broken. I'm just a human. Then I want to tell you one other thing. When people have said bad things about you, or nowadays on social media, people make little clips. They talk about each other, right? Sometimes on WhatsApp, sometimes in groups, sometimes the urge to know what someone said about you is also a heartbreaker. If you can build yourself, I don't even want to know. One day... Someone told me, and this happens often, it happened recently also. Someone told me, you know, there's a video where so-and-so said something about you. And I know this guy. And I'm like, oh. They said, yeah, we sent it to you. I said, thanks for telling me. To this day, I don't know what he said. I really, and I don't want to, I don't have the urge to listen to this long video all about me. I don't even want to know. Do you know why? When I say, may Allah grant him Jannah, it's okay. Because if he gets Jannah through my dua, I'm going to be there before him. And if I'm in Jannah, I don't care who else is there. You follow what I'm saying? But if I'm going to listen to what he said about me, it's going to create, it's going to a mess in my heart. I'm going to be lost. I won't have concentration in salah. I won't be able to eat properly, sleep properly. When I look at him, I'll be upset and it's going to upset me. I'm going to think who else knows about what he said. And whenever I look at anyone, I'm going to be embarrassed to come out in public because of what someone else said about me. Like this, I don't even know. So I don't care. I look at everyone. Salam alaikum guys. Everyone okay? I have a smile and I'm genuine. You know why? I don't know what you know about me and what you don't know about me because I might myself don't know what they know about me and I don't even know what I don't even know what has happened because I didn't even probably do nearly everything that you think I did Halas. it's a crazy world it's a crazy crazy world protect your heart understand where we are we're living in this particular way you have the Quran I can't go through all the stories but let me tell you Yusuf alayhi salam they accused him. The wife of this Aziz, this leader, accused him wrongly of trying to misbehave with her. What did he do? He took it in his stride. Wallahi, do you know what he said? Oh Allah, I'd rather go to jail than to do this. So Allah says, okay, go to jail. So he went to jail. He enjoyed his time there. Do you know that? Because his attitude was right. That's why he enjoyed his time there. He said, look, I'm in prison. I'm, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm going to wait for the help of Allah. I'm going to check, seize the opportunity. He got in. He saw two guys sitting there. He says, hey guys, what's happening, man? They said, you look like a good man. We've been having some dreams. We want you to translate, interpret them. He says, okay, let's go for it. When they told him the dreams, he started by saying, you know what? 
we worship Allah. Myself and my forefathers, we are blessed. We worship one, the maker alone, no one else. Many people don't know, many people don't, are not thankful and so on. And I invite you to worshiping Allah alone. That's what he said to the people in the prison. What did he do? He seized the opportunity. He, they didn't cry and wipe their tears. My heart is broken. I'm in jail for nothing. They accused me. You know what? I didn't even do all of this. I really didn't. He didn't say all of that. Not once. Not once did he say that. Subhanallah. You know and I know that he was falsely accused. He was excited. He said, never mind. It's okay. I'm not the first guy it happened to. I'm not going to be the last guy it happened to. Here I am in prison. How many innocent people are in prison? In some countries, most of the innocent are in jail and the crooks are outside. Yeah, in some countries. See, I heard it true. I better ask you, which country? But anyway, never mind. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, you can't. If something is, has happened, khalas, take it in your stride. You bashed another car and you got a phone home to say, you know what, I made a big accident. You have to do it whether you like it or not. Hey, don't tell my father. Don't tell. You have to tell them, break the ice, don't worry. It's okay, you're a human, you bash the car. But when you bash it three days in a row, then you've got a problem. <laughs> so Yusuf alayhi salam, he spoke to these guys and he told him, you know what, you are going to be set free, you are going to be executed according to the dreams you've had. When you're set free and you go into these, the, the, the king's palace, you must remember me. If an opportunity arises, talk about me. I'm an innocent man. So on. Allah gave him that opportunity after some time because Allah made him forget for a time. All of that, it was okay. How long did he spend in prison? A long time. Innocent man. He used the time constructively. When Corona came, well, thankfully it's not there anymore. What did we do? We used the time constructively. That's it. We were forced to do things and we did them the way we were told to do them in most cases. But if you don't adjust to what's going on, you're going to have a problem because you're going to be fighting with yourself and fighting with everyone else. Don't. Just protect your heart, protect your mind. Very important. I say these are the two most important organs. Your heart and your mind. Don't give them to anyone. They belong to Allah. It's okay. Everything else is fine. I need to train myself to look at things and to understand things. Yusuf alayhi salam comes out one day. Did he have hatred? No, he didn't. Not at all. Not at all. He forgave the guy for forgetting him because that wasn't a crime in the first place. It was just a human thing, forgetfulness. Secondly, he didn't go to the king and make a big deal about this and that. He let, he, he let it go. He let it go. These women themselves sought forgiveness from him. You know what? You were right. We were wrong. We are sorry. He said, it's okay. Leave it be. And then what happened? When the brothers came along one day, as soon as they came in and said, you know what? Are you Yusuf? He says, yes. You know what you did. You know what you did. Didn't you? Don't you? Yes. He said, well, will you forgive? He says, you are forgiven completely. No retribution today. In fact, you guys go home, bring our father and come back. Let's see what we can do. He forgave. When you forgive, you actually heal your own heart. Release it. Let go. Sometimes the fact that you're holding, I'm never going to forgive this person. It's fine. You're a human. We think that way too. It's human to do that too. It's not wrong. They must have done something really bad to you. But slowly get yourself used to saying, you know what? In my heart, forgiven. But I don't want to tell them that. That's also fine. Because if I say, don't worry, you're forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. They'll come and dagger me one day. They'll kill me, man. And they'll say, then in, in Akhirah, they say, but didn't you tell us that you were, we were forgiven? So we just killed you. I mean, that's a bit absurd, but I'm giving you the extreme example, right? So you don't, maybe you don't want to tell them, but in your heart you say, it's okay. I, no, you know what? I need to continue with my life. Life is very short. I'm working towards paradise. This is a detour. I don't want to be on this detour anymore. Let me get onto the path. Let me move straight and let me keep going. Subhanallah. Now we get to the same Quran. There are verses in the Quran. If repeated and if read, they will help you heal your heart. What are they? Starting number one, Ayatul Kursi. Number two, Suratul Fatiha. These are... Verses of the Quran that are powerful, they have in them cure. The Quran, the whole of it has cure. People tell me, can I read this a thousand times? Can I read this 10,000 times?
can I read this 125,000 times? And I said, you know what's the best thing for you to do? You don't know the diseases you have. You don't know which verses will impact which diseases and cure you and rid you of those diseases. So the best thing for you to do is to read the Quran from the beginning to the end as often as you can and keep going and you won't know that there were diseases that you had that were cured without you knowing that you had them. One day in the hereafter you'll find out.